So good afternoon to everybody who's joining us this afternoon <coughs> to uh, speak with Janaina Chape, whose new exhibition, Balancing into the Deep, uh, just opened with us in New York at the gallery um, just before the holiday weekend. We are particularly delighted to have Janaina with us today to talk about this new body of work, which is radically different to her previous bodies of work in many different ways that we're going to go into in, in some depth today, which is great. Um, and speaking of depth, um, I wanted to kick us off by asking Janaina where the title of the exhibition came from, Balancing into the Deep, because it evokes a sense more of the ocean and previous uh, preoccupations of bodies of work that she's been involved with, rather than the landscape, which this show clearly is involved with. So where did the title come from, Janaina? I mean, the title does come from a, a poem that I wrote. And in some ways, it did sort of make sense to me. Obviously, it does evoke to the ocean, but it also evokes to a certain uh, place where I think that I, I am right now with the paintings and that I got through in a way during this whole last year. So it is basically a balanced act into that space where I think that my paintings are coming from right now. So I think there was a sort of a, a long time of preparation for that. And now I feel pretty solid in that space, but the way until I got there, was a balancing act in a way. So right. that's kind of why I thought that that title would be really fitting to, to the new body of work because it kind of does have a reflection on the past going into what is now the new sort of painting space that I, that I feel I am. So <clears throat> ordinarily, I think I would normally ask you to look at the works on paper and then lead up to the paintings. But I think that this is such a radical body of work that we should do it exactly the reverse way, actually. Um, but before we start looking at the work, um, I wanted to ask you if you could give us a, a brief sense of how you, we, we're gonna see this incredible synthesis between a new technique and new material that you discovered and the scale of these paintings, which is, which is terrific. Um, I wanted to take you a step back and talk about your exhibition at the Orangerie in, in Paris. So you are one of a very limited number of contemporary artists who has been invited to show alongside um, the great Claude Monet's Water Lilies, which must be an incredibly daunting task for anybody, isn't it? Quite intimidating, I would say. I mean, at first, when I was invited, I was very um, intimidated, as I say, because it's just uh, one of the, you know, the first painter you meet when you're growing up, when you fall in love with painting. So it obviously it's something um, that is quite big in my life. And the space that is basically the, the show space <clears throat> for that dialogue with Monet is right in front of the water lilies. So basically before you walk into the water lilies, you walk through that space where my show was. So knowing that, and I, when I went to visit, I really felt overwhelmed almost, but I think that the process, you know, I, I, I prepared for it for a year and that years sort of helped me to get through that intimidation and sort of really develop a, an understanding of what it was that I felt like I could dialogue with in, in that sense. And I looked a lot into Monet's drawings and sketches, which he actually didn't like showing very much and they were not really shown, but I felt very drawn to them to sort of understand the underlining work of, of the big scale paintings of the water lilies, because there is all this 
underlying gestural painting that I was very fascinated with and which relates to those sketches and drawings he did and um and somehow I went that route you know to kind of pick up on the drawings and and I ended up making a a body of work that was basically drawings and that I felt like this is where I would have that dialogue. <clears throat> I mean, I should stress that that body of work was made before COVID. So that was a body, it was a pre-COVID body of work that you'd been preparing for the exhibition in Paris. Right. Um, and then when you were able to go for the sort of Venissage, something very important happened in Paris. You went to a, an art store. Can you talk to <laughs> Can you talk, I mean, as, as one does, right? You're an artist. Right, yes. Can, can you talk a little bit about, there was a sort of epiphany that happened in this art. Right. Well, you know, I mean, after, first I was installing the show and while I was installing the show, the museum was closed and I could be with the water lilies by myself, which is a very, um, it's an, an amazing privilege. So I did spend a lot of time reflecting on painting in that space. And then shortly before I had to leave back to New York, I went to my favorite art store that I always go to. Because in that sense, yeah, it's, I am like a little kid in a candy store. And I went to the Cinelier store that is just amazingly beautiful. And when I was in there, and I had been in there before, and I had seen those pigment sticks before, but I didn't go there. Like I so I went to the St. Elias store and there was this whole wall filled with this oil pigment sticks that were really like really thick oil pigment sticks. And I had seen them before. I had tried out some oil sticks before, but they were not those, those specific ones. And they just looked so amazing. And then I thought, you know, I've been like looking at them for such a long time and I never got them really like and then so I just decided to buy a whole suitcase of them and bring them back to New York and sort of just realized that um I wanted to go to that space you know to that other sort of a painting space which is basically oil painting so now we've got the perfect setup because you've talked about the scale of the Monet paintings and, and how intimidating they are. I mean, they're giant, they're very large paintings, especially for the late 19th century when they were made. Um, the scale is, is really extraordinary. Um, but we've also now got you with these paint sticks in hand back in New York, which are in, in and of themselves of a very different scale to anything that you've used to draw with before. So what I'd like to do now is just go straight into the main gallery of the exhibition. And there are six paintings in the main gallery. Um, and the, the biggest painting in the main gallery is really an enormous painting. It's over 30 feet long. Um, it's about 12 feet tall. You see it on, here on the left, left wall. Uh, it is nothing short of mural sized. Um, and it, it seems obvious that this is a response to Monet in many respects, but what allowed this response to Monet is this material that you found in Paris, where you are no longer constricted with drawing with an oil pencil, basically something that is the size of a pencil, but right. we're, now, we're now able to mix all of the material and the media that you've been using in the past, Cassine, underpainting, oil painting, but suddenly you had at your disposal these oil sticks that are literally sort of two inches in diameter, and you could gesture with and draw on the surface of the painting, a gesture that you'd only have been able to do with a very, very small pencil oil drawing exactly. before. And, and what happens is this extraordinary kind of explosion of scale and, and drama and drawing. Yeah, and I think also especially, you know, um, there, there is now 
closure also between drawing and painting because it allows me so you know in terms of the materiality of it you know because they are sort of very smooth and uh, fluid so you can make a trace but you can also fill out a whole space with paint so in a way that whole dialogue between the painting and the drawing kind of can also merge so the drawing and the painting merges and it allows you sort of a broader um, discussion with, with that sort of, you know, the, the drawing, the painting, the background, the foreground, it kind of allows you to have a bigger playroom. So in terms of the scale also, obviously it makes sense, you know, when you make a little sketch, you draw with a pencil. <laughs> And when you have that size, you draw with a pencil because it is right. that thick. Like a so giant. obviously then it, like, it makes sense because then basically the gesture can um, have a much bigger presence. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's easy to look at this painting and not really understand how big it is. I mean, to put this in context, uh, this is bigger than Picasso's Guernica. This is painting on a historic and ambitious scale that, you know, I, I, I think one rarely sees these days. Um, and, you know, I, I mean, it's a sort of heroic scale. I mean, the Jericho's Raft of the Medusa, Picasso's Guernica. Um, did you, in embarking on, on, I mean, I would be completely intimidated to think of making something this large. You said you were intimidated by Monet, but it seems to me that you're really tackling him head on here. Were you, were you thinking about taking on some of those great modern masters uh, in these paintings? I mean, to me, the challenge really is that idea that I can actually master a large scale painting like that with the same lightness and with the same sort of a immediate response that I do with a sketch. To me, that's kind of the challenge that I can actually physically conquer the canvas with the same sort of a rapid gestures. Um, so in a way, obviously, yes, you think of the painters who did it before you, you know, in that large scale and there you, you, you try to reflect about it. But for me, it is a very intimate challenge of really managing um, to sort of master that size with the same fluidity that I would do a much smaller painting, that translation of scale. Because I think when I did my first mural, when I painted the first mural, I, I was quite intimidated by the giant scale of it. It was really, really big. And I had several ways that I thought I could actually manage the scale how to translate a painting into that scale. So I prepared, um, I did sketches, I did a smaller painting that I would then make in big. Like I did all this preparation and I had people to help me. And when I got there on the first day, I realized it wasn't about that. It wasn't about just the projection of a, of a painting of mine into a larger scale. It wasn't about just like magnifying an, an existing idea, an existing painting. At that, so the second day, I just threw all those sketches away. I actually told the help that I had, you know, asked to help me like to just bring me some water and help me with like giving me the paints on, on the scaffold. And I decided to do it, you know, like I do a sketch, like I do a smaller painting in my studio without any sort of a guidance because that was that's really the challenge and um so for me working then with a new material in an in that scale was that kind of challenge where i thought you know i want to be able to have that drawing and to have that those marks and those lines conquer that size i you know one of the things about about these paintings, these new paintings, 
is I was, I was fortunate enough to spend a lot of time with you whilst these paintings were being made. And we spent a lot of time talking about the paintings themselves. And I was able to see them evolving um, and uh, over a long period of time and, and the way that you were working on them. And one of the things that's remarkable, I think a couple of things that should be stressed, there are no preparatory works for these paintings. Um, any drawings associated with the paintings really come afterwards or at the same time as the paintings. So there aren't preparatory works. Um, you literally launch yourself into the, into the painting and feel your way from, from beginning to end. So at the beginning with these, these very, very broad uh, strokes, literally broad strokes blocking out the painting. And at the end of it, um, and that's where I, I, I find they, the reference to the title of the show is so interesting, is that I was watching you literally tuning and balancing the paintings in, a, in an almost sort of technical or mechanical way, you know, by small applications of drawing and color in different places around the painting. And gradually the painting, vast in scale, got kind of tuned up and refined and pulled together and, and became more and more taut and in, and, and, uh, and, and in sync. Um, you know, it was really remarkable to watch you doing that because it is a wholly, it seems to be anyway, a wholly intuitive process. Can you talk about the way- Yeah, I mean, it, it is. Work in that process? Sometimes I feel like every painting is, is really like a love affair. It's a relationship that you build and you work through it, you know, in terms of like, um, there is a lot of uh, little discussions, like uh, little puzzles and little things that you try to solve, like in a relationship. So in a way, the brushstrokes in the beginning, they set up a sort of a, a first dialogue and a first outline, and then I respond to it. And you, uh, responding to it creates another set of problems. I call them problems because it's always about finding the solution of how to map out that whole space. And I think that um, once, that's why sometimes I feel like it's, it's, you know, you start basically with one gesture, with one brush stroke, you lay out one situation that then you respond immediately to. And then you respond to that again. And that kind of starts creating that puzzle and then you step back. So it gets more and more complicated. The beginning sometimes is quite fast because you go very intuitively after certain colors, certain memories, like a data bank. Like I feel sometimes like I have a whole data bank of, uh, of images, of colors, of landscapes, of little dialogues of light and sh shade and traces in my head that I kind of pull out and, I start the dialogue with a certain movement, with a certain shape, with a certain color, and then it evolves from that. And that's the relationship that to me is always new and fascinating every time I start a painting. And then there's the new challenges in terms of like the, the size. And I think with this painting particularly, to me, the challenge was also that it's such a horizontal format and so long and how to really make you know the left and the right sort of talk to each other and become one so i think that that was kind of like the you know it towards the end it becomes a much more sort of delicate dialogue because yeah. everything you know starts closing up and becoming and uh and it's a lot of observation time Really. And the, the other thing about watching you make this painting that perhaps one doesn't think about automatically is firstly, the painting is, is very, very large. It, it's got a very performative element. I mean, people talk about Jackson Pollock and his drip painting when he was making them on the floor, this is made on the wall, um, as having this performative quality, almost dancing in the space of the canvas. But, you know, on a, on a very, basic level watching you making these paintings was incredibly physical you were up and down ladders and up and down scaffoldings for days i mean you almost 
you almost need to train yourself physically to make a painting this size. It, it is a little bit because especially, you know, with to have a steady, you know, steady stroke, obviously, you know, you have to have that. You, you can't shake in the middle. You can stop in the middle. It needs to go from one side to the other and it needs to be forceful. And, it, and if you have to go up, you have to go up and take that line up in the same way as if there is no scaffold. So there is obviously like a physical element to it that I find very appealing though, because I do like to feel that, you know, like that I am almost an extension of the brush or of, of the pencil or of the oil stick, you know, like you feel like you're an extension, like it's one and you're just like thinking of the gesture and you have to be able to, to manage that. I mean, as a, as a corollary to that, I mean, one of the interesting things as a viewer is that the painting is, is so large that you can't really take it all in from one fixed viewpoint. How, you know, you can get very far back, but then you lose the painting in a certain way. So to no small extent, the way that one has to read this painting is physically moving along it and moving back. So engaging in the same kind of physical activity that you were engaged in, where you were going right. up to make the painting and along, but physically moving along the painting and almost sort of reading the painting. Um, and it becomes, it, it, so that, that, that demands a certain physicality from the viewer. But I think the interesting thing about it and about this group of paintings is that whilst they are really challenging this notion of, of, of scale in your work, you've managed to retain a, a, a great deal of intimacy in the paintings. I mean, they, they do not feel like um, macho paintings. They feel very, very intimate. Uh, can, you know, do you think that, that, that? I think that for me is the very important part. Like, because I don't, you know, I feel like sometimes, you know, when people think of a larger scale of bigger things, it immediately goes into that place of planning, of controlling, of being able to sort of um, control like a big space or a big crowd or a big, you know, like I feel like there is always uh, a relationship, the scale that becomes a relationship with power, with control, with that sort of a, you know, very, very, uh, almost a, a to me, an aggressive attitude of like trying to impose. And for me, it's very important that I actually challenge myself to keep that intimacy, to keep that balance also of a dialogue that I, that I think for me is very important as a work process, which is between the paint and me, the, the, the stroke, the brush stroke, the, the pencil shape, that it, still has that intimacy that it's very you know I, that it, there is a response and a balance between the two that i'm not trying to impose calculate and 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 just with the scale basically becomes then just a tool of power and not a scale because of the size could we look at i'd like to look at two paintings um sort of back to back the images. One is the painting on the left in this, uh, in this shot, which is um, pale yellow summer. And then I'd like to look at sunken, sunken sun. So, um, so this is pale yellow summer. I mean, it, it, it's super interesting to me that at the very moment when the big painting is emerging and it has this kind of really powerful overall drawing quality, you balance that or you counterbalance that by making two paintings that have a, 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 a beautiful kind of delicacy and rawness to them, where you allow the casting and the underpainting to come through. And the drawing is sort of secondary, it's pushed back a little bit. Um, and that, that happens in this painting and it happens in Sunken Sun, where the underpainting is, is allowed to come through a lot. Can you talk about the specific difference in these two paintings to the large painting in terms of overall um, application? Right. 
and allowing I mean, them to open up a bit more? I mean, I think there is, obviously there's like different places of interest that an artist wants to go to and express. And I like to keep that sort of a very open, not to draw myself in a corner also, because I think that there is different relationships and different um, uh, ideas that I, that I want to express. And I think that in that painting, I was really wanting to see and to have a very clear dialogue between the brushstrokes and that first gestural expression and just slight insertions, almost inserts of light and of marks that are very clear and maybe also just uh, that are not broken up. And I think that this one has that a lot to me. And, and, and I stopped at some point and I stepped back and I actually had that feeling that the painting was resolved, that it did not need additional information to express that particular idea. So I think with each painting, there is a different place. There is a different place to stop the painting. There is a different place that I want to achieve, that I want to show, that I want to talk about. And, and with this one, it is a very similar um, idea because I think also this has an expression, you know, of a sort of a fast response to a situation in a way and a memory and, and which needed to be expressed like that. I mean, I, I think that that painting in a way, I was um, upstate looking at the valley and looking at the landscape all the time. And there was a couple of days of fog. There was a really, really, really beautiful fog with some lights coming through the background. And I really felt like I was carving out light through fog. And that kind of imagery was stuck in my head. And there was this tension about it because everything was also changing. And, the, and then there was like a storm and things were getting darker and lighter at the same time. And I wanted to capture in a way that fastness as well and yeah. not break it up too much. But these, they're not literal depictions of landscape. I mean, these don't look like the landscape you were in, but they feel very no. much as if you absorbed the landscape you were in and, uh, and recycled it in some way or reconstituted it in some way. Um, yeah, I think that exactly, you know, it's like observing certain parts of it, observing, you know, also your emo emotional uh, relationship to what is happening around you. You know, there's always like that sort of a balance between what is happening outside with what is happening inside and trying to express that, but also combining that with the material and the, and the marks itself, which gets into an abstract place that is really interesting. So this painting, which is not a small painting either, if you look at the size, you can tell, was made in the same space as the large painting. It was actually on a wall adjacent to it on the left-hand side. And they were made at the same time. And yet it has a completely different feel to the big painting. Uh, yeah. the, the, the big painting is extraordinarily intense and sort of reamed in. And this painting has an expansiveness and openness and lightness to it. Uh, and use the word emotional earlier and I use the word intuitive, but these really do feel like they are emotional responses to not just landscape, but the environmental scape that, you know, the environment scape that you're in at any given time. Um, can you talk about how uh, emotional these paintings are for you? I mean, I feel like there is a part that comes definitely from a, an emotional place where I, I try to understand an emotion or the relationship of an emotion to color, to movement though, you know, like, so there is, I think two parts of it. There is an interest where I am really interested 
how I express emotions with mark making. But then again, I have almost like a whole vocabulary and a and data bank of different marks and different ways to 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 use the gesture to express certain things. The same thing with colors. There is a play with like how certain colors express an emotion or not, or how, how to actually then try to apply a color that normally wouldn't express that emotion in a completely different context. So I think there is a very rational part that kind of sets all this like different games inside of it, but there is a very strong emotional part that I where I try basically to, to sort of put them out, you know, and like kind of visualize certain things. And then they become part of this puzzle. Um, a painting like Blue Moon, um, which is hung on the left of Sunken Sun, just seems to come from a very different space. I mean, it, it's uh, a similar space to the large painting, let's say but it has an almost geological sort of sense of scale. And, and the color is so particular. Uh, I mean, the register of this painting is, is, is really, really uh, unique, I think, in your work. Yes, this painting actually, I was really like, it, it, it would make me wake up at night and think about it because it, it had an intensity in terms of also that dialogue between those colors, you know, that ochre with the violet, with the blue. I used certain colors that I hadn't used before. You know, like I obviously each artist I'm sure has that preferred color is the, you know, like something that you sort of over the years you develop certain love affairs to certain, you know, pigments. But, um, and I and I try to break that sometimes and, and kind of take in a very different, tone or, or a very different way of sort of putting two colors next to each other, basically to challenge myself into finding a solution again. And I think with that painting, I did have like a bunch of little weird challenges that I put into there and it, it created almost like a fight, which was very interesting to me because this is that sort of a relationship with, with the pain that is to me so fascinating and never tiring. Like I can always create this crazy fight with my painting um, that I create myself, but it sucks me in. And then I have to solve it. You know? I, I mean, I, I would say that this painting feels the most macho of the paintings in a way. Would you agree with that? I mean, I, much of because of it, of the the because it seems kind of violent almost. I mean, if that's the, I think it it, it has a, it is a bit violent almost because I think that I went into a place where I was really challenging myself about certain colors that I wanted to use and impose in the canvas and make it work. So I kind of created a, a a more violent situation and relationship between the different elements in the in the painting. The two smaller paintings in the exhibition, and when I say smaller, they're not small, but the two smaller paintings in the exhibition uh, have a, a, a sense of um, containment. Uh, and, and balance within them, that these very large paintings sort of eschew. Um, and they, they feel as if they're uh, less open-ended as statements. They feel more uh, uh, as if they're contained as statements, even though they're not small paintings. Um, were those made as part of this group uh, with a very different register in mind or a sense of punctuation? Or how did you approach those two paintings? I mean, it is it is a, always a an interesting thing. Like when you start, you know, I mean, I was working, I worked like on four or five 
large scale canvases in a row. So I was, you know, getting very used and very comfortable with the big scale. So obviously when you then shift down, I mean, I, I do always also draw at the same time and I draw much smaller scale with my pencils and I do that kind of every day because it, I do like um, to have that as a work process. But when, you, when I scale down from painting those large um, canvases to the smaller ones with the same materials, with the oil sticks, obviously there's a shift back, you know, like the same way I, you know, I go from small to then big, I'm shifting it back to a even more like intimate space, you know, where there is a, a, some sort of like, it is a bit more private, delicate in a way that space because the, the size is also, you know, smaller. So I think that there is a shift. They were done at the same time. But I think that there is a bit of a different discussion that has the paint with me also, like where I also keep my gestures smaller because I, I scale my gesture down with the scale. So instead of using the bigger yeah. gestures, I use this, the gesture that in a way is fit for that size. So, I mean, I know I'm not going to ask this as a specific question, but can you see yourself in three or four years make, you know, or for another exhibition, making very intimately scaled works on a much smaller scale? Would that still work for you? I mean, now we could, would we have Janaina producing miniatures? <laughs> well, miniatures, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I do a lot of uh, drawings as in small, like I, with whatever paper there is, I would definitely use it, but the, it's a very different, I mean, I don't know, to be honest with you, like as paintings, I did some smaller canvases that were very sketchy ones, you know, that I tried to be kind of also very fast about them, like little glimpses. So, there, there is that space because I think it's a, it's an investigation that is in a different level. It's not only about the scale, as I say. You know, there is a whole investigation that goes along with that shift of scale, which I think is always very interesting. And whenever I get to a place where I feel this as a challenge to me, I will go there. So that's the perfect segue to come out of the main gallery. Uh, into the front gallery where there are a group of drawings and the smallest work in the exhibition, which is literally 20, 20 by 30 inches work on paper. Um, in this space, uh, there, are, there are drawings that were made at the same time with one exception. There are drawings that were made at the same time as the paintings. And one of the things that was very interesting to me about the, the drawing process was as I said earlier, these are not preparatory drawings. These are freestanding works. They're not being made before you paint. They're being made at the same time as you're painting. In many cases, late at night, overnight. Um, and I almost had the sense that you were kind of not problem solving, but looking to record things that you'd learned in the paintings during the day when you'd been making them in these drawings in a more intimate scale. Um, and you talked earlier about being fascinated with Monet's use of drawing uh, and that he didn't like his drawings to be seen, but it was a very consistent activity for him. It was a very important activity for him. In, in terms of your oeuvre, what, what place do the drawings occupy? How important are they? To me, drawings are extremely important extremely important because I think it is a way of making notations, of, of, of writing down observations that I have. And um, I really, like if I can, I draw every day because for me, it's a way, not like a diary necessarily because it's not only about like my emotional um, output, it's always about the observations, what I, 
kind of saw, understood, or things that I would like to discuss in terms of the, the color or ideas. So noting them down and, and making those drawings to me is a, is a very important part in, in, of my work process. So if we could go to the smallest work in the exhibition, which is Hudson River sketch number 19, it's on the left in this image. I mean, this is a much more traditionally scaled work. It's 22 by 30 inches. Um, it looks like quite a quick and fairly impressionistic view of a landscape, but it's not at all. I mean, it's a, it's a very beautiful kind of intimate response. Um, and, and again, it has this range of speed of mark making which you see in the paintings. I mean, one of the things that's, I think, particularly exciting about the paintings is the speed of the mark making that was facilitated by these large oil sticks. So the mark making can be very quick, it can be slow, it can be, it can be, um, you know, it, it can be gestural, it can be covering something up. Um, and you really see it here in the smallest work in, in the entire exhibition. You, you almost see all that virtuosity of your hand that work in this drawing. Yeah, and I think that's why like the, 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 the process of like really drawing every day is playing an instrument, you know, like you, you, you can go to a different space when you really know how to, when, when you know how to play your instrument, when you exercise it every day, you know, then you, you kind of like can play with it much more and expand and go to different places and I think it's the same with the drawing and I think I'm, I'm very fascinated by by that obviously like how to manage to express certain things with very few information with a little information with a little color and and not have to explain something in a very detailed way I don't want to illustrate something mm -hmm. I want to I want that mark making and the expression to have a voice that that is very independent, that just by itself is there and that it's not um, explained. And of course, in the front gallery, you couldn't resist it. There's a, a very large work on paper, a nine part work on paper, memory of memory, um, which we see here. Um, yeah. It is nine sheets of the large paper. Um, a drawing, a composite drawing made um, on the floor. The drawings were all being made on the floor when I saw them. Um, and then put back together again to give this extraordinarily kind of dynamic uh, work, on, to create this extraordinarily dynamic work on paper. Um, yeah, I particularly, I mean, I, I, I like, I started doing those polyptics, um, in a way kind of based to the fact that sometimes yes I, I do have always a pile of paper in my living room or wherever I am or if I'm traveling and and I make sketches and I make smaller work um, and obviously then at some point I started to lay them on the floor and then do another one but relate it to the previous one and that kind of became a bit of a game and obviously I could do that anywhere. It didn't have to be in the studio or in a particularly big space or have a big wall to do that. So it was a very sort of a, you know, I, I, I could travel with it wherever I wanted and kind of not limit myself about the scale because I could make these relationships. And I got really interested in the relationship of how and where, you know, it would be a very different work if this was one sheet of paper. And obviously ha having those, you know, separate sheet of papers, just st I start with one, I put it down, then I start the other one thinking like with the memory of the old one and I continue it and then I lay it down. So it's not done at the same time, all of it. It kind of, each one exists in its own way as well and then I lay it down and then I start relating one to the other and playing around and adding 
lines to it and I add, you know, um, information to it until I feel that the whole group talks to each other. Yeah, and there's a wonderful sort of playfulness to this because this sort of serial use of different sheets that you can draw one after the other or across from or to produces both areas of drawing that sort of almost mirror each other, but certainly mimic each other as it moves across serial pages, uh, serial sheets of paper. And so I think one of the characteristics of the works on paper in the show is that there's an incredible kind of freedom and playfulness to them. Yes, and, 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 and because it is, I mean, I, I started doing those, um, politics, as I said, you know, mostly at like night time in my living room, like putting them down and really like a game in a way, like relating one to the other and, and sometimes mirroring the drawing, sometimes responding, sometimes creating a whole different situation with one sheet. And, and so it's really like an imposed sort of game, you know, of, of, of color and abstraction and lines and and observations, it all goes together in, 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 in that space, which is really fascinating to me because it's kind of, it always seems like it never ends. You know, I can always start a new one and I will find a whole different set of, of things I can explore because every little thing you change, it changes the response. Right. You know, I, I, you cannot repeat your own, as much as you can repeat some gestures, there, were, there will be maybe something that changes and then it changes the response again. And I'm very fascinated by that. I think that's a beautiful place to, to leave it, Janaina. Thank you so much. I mean, one of the nice things about that is, I suppose that if one thinks about Monet or Cezanne, the great Cezanne exhibition at the Museum Montmartre at the moment, one thinks about uh, a more traditional use of drawing, which was a sort of problem solving or recording. But in your right. work, it's not problem solving or recording. It's actually going down the rabbit hole, chasing the next opportunity, chasing the next <laughs> idea, chasing the next uh, space to, to play in and to be playful in, in the work. And I think that that sort of sense of vitality and energy certainly comes across in both the drawings and the show, which is really extraordinary. So uh, thank you so much for talking with us about it today. Thank and you, take, thank and, you. And, and taking us through the paintings. Um, and I hope that everybody who was able to join us today gets a chance to see the show uh, in person. It's at the gallery through um, August the 6th. Uh, and um, we, we hope to see you all there and, and for you to see the show in person. So thank you so much. It's lovely to see you today. Thank you, sir. Take see care. you soon. Thanks, Take everybody, care. for joining us. Thank you all.